You're listening to the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast, episode 51. Today, I'm going to be sharing all about the wonderfulness that is peppermint hydrosol. You'll hear about the benefits and lots of ways that you can use this fun aromatic water. You're listening to the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast with your host, Liz Fulcher. If you're interested in learning about essential oils, hearing interviews with industry experts, and discovering ways to grow your own aromatherapy business, this is the podcast for you. For more information and show notes, visit the website at aromaticwisdominstitute.com. Now sit back, relax, take a deep breath, and enjoy as Liz shares a dose of aromatic wisdom. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so grateful that uh, you have me in your earbuds and that we can spend some time together learning about aromatherapy and specifically today about peppermint hydrosol. Before we get started, I do have two announcements. The first is that I now have a Patreon page, something which my sons have been telling me for literally for years that I needed to create. And so I did. If you go to P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash aromatic wisdom, that's Patreon dot com forward slash aromatic wisdom, you'll see that it is a way that my listeners can help contribute and support the podcast. And I'm thrilled and proud and excited and honored to welcome four new patrons to the Aromatic Wisdom Patron page. They are Herb and Laurel, and of course, my two sons, Davide and Gianluca, who lovingly support Mom's podcast. I very, very much appreciate it, and it really does help me keep the show going, keeps the lights on, basically. My second announcement is that I have actually created a website. Yes, I did all by my big girl self. I created a website just for this podcast. And that's an easy one, aromaticwisdompodcast.com, where you can find all sorts of just, it's all about the podcast. It's just about the podcast. Now there's a link to go back to my school. And if you go to my school, there's a link to go to the podcast. Hopefully I've made it easy for you. Uh, But when you go to aromaticwisdompodcast.com, you'll find all the show notes for today's episode and in all the past episodes as well. There you go. Okay, I think it's time we jump into, ooh, wouldn't that be fun? Jump into some peppermint hydrosol. Better close your eyes. So those of you that are maybe like tuning in for the first time, or you've never heard of a hydrosol, in a nutshell, it's a product that is created when a plant, and in this case, the plant we're talking about is peppermint, menta ex peperita, is distilled. And the specific part of the peppermint plant that's used in distillation is what we call the aerial part. So the aerial part of any plant that's distilled refers to anything that is above ground. It does not include any roots or rhizomes. There are two products that are created from this distillation. One is peppermint essential oil, a well-known friend to those of us in the world of essential oils and aromatherapy. The other product comes from the water portion of the distillate called hydrosol or hydrolat. I tend to use the word hydrosol more frequently, more comfortably, because I live in the United States. That is the word we use here, but I think it's pretty international. Uh, But hydrolat is also a very common term for this water distillate. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't throw this in here at this point. By definition, a hydrosol is not necessarily the byproduct of distillation. If you are trying to make a hydrosol, if you are doing the distillation with the purpose of the main product being a hydrosol, then the essential oil is the byproduct. If you are doing a distillation with the primary product being the essential oil, then yes, hydrosol is the byproduct. Only when it's only a byproduct when it is, if that makes sense. So don't use, don't just say across the board, oh, I know what a hydrosol is. It's the byproduct of uh, distilling a plant. 
Not necessarily. There's always a primary product and a byproduct in every, just about every manufacturing industry. In many cases, hydrosol is the primary product. Just remember that. So I love hydrosols. We have a home full of hydrosols. I use them literally every single day, either in my skincare or my mouth care with my animals. I might wash the floors with them because at my home, we have a lot of toys for making hydrosols. Specifically, we have a lot of stills and we have a garden with plants that are real easy to grow like peppermint, lavender, thyme, oregano. So we tend to make our own hydrosols. I'll be honest, my favorite still to use is my little five liter still, which I named her baby because I can use just a little bit of plant material and whip up a quick batch of hydrosols in no time. And that way I sort of always have a fresh batch. They are so, they, meaning hydrosols, are so wonderful to have in your aromatherapy kit because first and foremost, they're safe. Safe, 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 safe. You can use them with children, with animals, with infants, with seniors, with people who are compromised, sick. You can use them on open wounds. Heck, you can drink them. You can use them all day. So hydrosols, it's always my first line of defense when I'm treating something. If I can address an issue with hydrosol before I even get out my essential oils, I'm very happy. It's also a more sustainable aromatic product. So um, therapeutically, in particular for like, like a topical issue like a wound or scrape or the skin or hives, anything where the skin is actually compromised, the integrity of the tissue is compromised, I almost always, always address that first with a hydrosol. And then if I need to get out a bigger gun, then I go with my essential oils or CO2 or sometimes a carrier. Using hydrosols, as I just said, it's a much more sustainable way to use an aromatic. And of course, it's safer because you don't get sensitization. There has never been, I've never seen any um, cases in which one becomes sensitized from using a hydrosol. Sensitization is a real problem when you're using essential oils directly on the skin. And I have a whole podcast episode about that. I have a blog post about that. All those links I'll put in the show notes for this program today. Yeah, sensitization is where you start to build up an intolerance to an essential oil, and then you get skin problems. We don't want that. We want always have our essential oil friends around us, treat them with respect so that they uh, treat us with respect. Okay, I have blathered on long enough about how wonderful hydrosols are because clearly I love them. I think I say the same things over and over again in every podcast I do about hydrosols, but that's okay. There's so much incorrect incorrect information out there that it is worth repeating the right stuff. I also have a course, Hydrosols for Health, that is pretty comprehensive. I'm redoing it this year. It uh, I put it out in 2019 and I'm updating it and I'm going to add some new information for 22. So that will also be in the show notes. Okay, let's get into peppermint hydrosol. I'm going to talk about the therapeutic properties. I'll talk a little bit about the energetic properties. I will talk about the benefits and give you some ways to use peppermint hydrosol. I'm going to go through each of these properties in what I hope to be alphabetical order. So the first property is analgesic. Peppermint hydrosol has properties that can really help to reduce pain. In particular, I like to use peppermint hydrosol in a hot inflamed area in the form of a compress. So if you take a piece of any kind of piece of material, flannel is really nice, soak it in the peppermint hydrosol, wring it out a little bit. You don't want it to be dripping wet and just lay it on the hot inflamed joint is tends to be what I think of. Do be careful when you're doing this that you're not putting a large amount of the compress over a large area, and particularly the torso, because the client or the person on whom you're putting the peppermint hydrosol could start to get cold. And that happened to me once in massage where a gentleman was having back pain and I took the compress, which was huge, and laid it across his back. In about 15 minutes, he was really cold and he said, you know, I'm really chilly. Whatever you're doing, that technique is making me cold. Well, it was February. My room was probably not warm enough to do this uh, specific 
procedure on his back. And in retrospect, I really should have used essential oil and a warming carrier. I was actually going more for the analgesic effect, not so much for the cooling and anti-inflammatory properties, which also you, you can get with peppermint hydrosol. Maybe just reserve peppermint hydrosol for a hot inflamed joint in a compress. Peppermint hydrosol is antibacterial. All hydrosols have antibacterial properties that help fight germs. Peppermint hydrosol is no exception. Anti-inflammatory. I have used peppermint hydrosol to reduce the inflammation on my own rosacea. I started getting rosacea in my 30s uh, when I would take really hot, hot baths, and I'm prone to it anyway, and it really got inflamed. Now, I will use either peppermint hydrosol or rose hydrosol for my rosacea. The peppermint seems to just really cool it down when it's when I have an when I have an outbreak or really bad inflammation. Uh, rose works as as well for this, but I like rose more for maintaining it, maintaining uh, the absence of my rosacea. In terms of its anti-inflammatory properties, peppermint hydrosol is really nice for hot inflamed poison ivy. I have such a super recipe that I made. Uh, I think I just call it, um, what I call it, do-it-yourself chamomile lotion or something. I will put the recipe in the show notes, but basically you want to have French green clay, peppermint hydrosol, I think baking soda, and then you can put in a little bit of essential oil if you'd like. But honestly, those three things, the baking soda, French green clay, and then peppermint hydrosol, enough just that it it, um, becomes kind of like creamy. Put that on the poison ivy and the peppermint cools the inflammation and it helps stop the itch. And then the clay has a drawing property. Let's see, uh, dental rinse. If someone has swollen gums from dental issues or after dental treatments, it's really nice to do a mouthwash with peppermint hydrosol. You you can do the mouthwash or the mouth rinse completely undiluted. Just take straight hydrosol and take a swig of it and swish it around in your mouth. And I would do that two or three times a day. The next property is astringent. Peppermint hydrosol has astringent properties that can really help benefit the skin, in particular oily skin, when used as a facial toner. That can be done as a gentle mist. Always be careful of the eyes because peppermint can burn. Uh, This hydrosol will tighten the pores and, again, help reduce oily skin. Super for teenage skin. Peppermint hydrosol, it's great for cleaning. Now, I have so much of it that is nothing for me just to throw some of it on the floor and take a rag and my little, not a Swiffer, but my sort of Swiffer broom and just wash the floors with it. I use it to wash my tile floors, my wood floors. I wipe down dusty surfaces in my home. I even use it in my car. And it is a great way to use up any hydrosols that are close to expiring or unless you just are making it and you want to make a batch for cleaning. Why not? Peppermint hydrosol is cooling. Now, I did talk about the cooling hot inflamed areas, but just in general, the coolness can be really nice, unless it's a massage client (laughs) with a big compress on his back. Peppermint is cooling in nature because of the menthol in the water. So it is super for misting on your face when you're in hot weather. I always keep a little bit in my refrigerator door and when I'm feeling really warm, I'll open the door and spray my face and mist my, you know, around my neck, my underarms, my legs. And it's also very nice for hot flashes. Peppermint hydrosol is my go-to first thing I pack when I'm traveling. Because when you are in an in a airplane, in a car, in a train, in any sort of, what do you call it, vehicle that is traveling, and especially if it's long hours, you get hot and stuffy. And it's just delightful. Even if it is now room temperature, if it's no longer cold, it is so delightful to just spray your face, your hands, a little squirt in your mouth. And it's very, very refreshing in a, when you're traveling. And I can tell you, when I'm in an airplane, I always make sure I have peppermint hydrosol with me. And I will spritz it several times throughout the flight and always get people turning around looking, what is that? Mm, that's so nice. What is that minty smell? 
Okay, we're up to D, decongestant. When my sinuses are giving me trouble, I use my peppermint hydrosol in two ways. I will actually heat it and use it in a steam distillation to help unclog blocked nasal passages. You just want to heat it enough until it produces steam. Put it in a like a mug, lean over, put a towel over your head, and inhale the steam. That is also especially nice to do a steam inhalation with children because the hydrosol is more gentle. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you that I also use it in a neti pot, but be very careful that you blend it with water. Pure undiluted peppermint hydrosol in a neti pot in your sinuses will burn. It's just too much. If you do 50% hydrosol, 50% tepid distilled water, then it's really nice when you're clogged up or when you've been clogged up. It's a super way to just really clear out those sinus passages. Peppermint hydrosol is fabulous as a digestive aid. I personally have found that organic peppermint hydrosol, and please make sure that if you're ever taking it by mouth, it's organic, vibrant, fresh. You know the source. There are no preservatives. You want to have the best hydrosol that you can get your hands on if you're going to ingest it. I have had really good luck with 50% Peppermint hydrosol in a glass of cool water, 50% water, 50% hydrosol, can really help settle digestion and gas. Well, I'll tell you what's nice is if you have peppermint hydrosol and sparkling water. That is just refreshing and delicious in the summer. I would like to say here that if you have reflux, I would not recommend drinking peppermint hydrosol, and I'll tell you why. Peppermint tea is known to relax the sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach, and that causes reflux and heartburn. So I would not suggest drinking the hydrosol either if you have this issue. Next, deodorizer. Now my family loves to go camping in the summer. We have discovered that when you mist peppermint hydrosol over the arms and the underarms, it can be a really refreshing way to neutralize odor. It's also really nice to spray the feet right on the socks if you want to. Uh, if you've missed a day in the shower, as happens in, in camping, then peppermint hydrosol goes a long way to keep everybody on good terms. It can make a great mouth rinse to fight bad breath. Uh, Again, for hot, sweaty, stinky feet, just add a cup of pepper and hydrosol to a small basin of cool water, and that makes a really nice foot soak. I would do that before I would use peppermint essential oil because then you need to put in an emulsifier and it becomes a whole thing. Just use peppermint hydrosol so much easier. And finally, I'd like to address the energetic, vibrational, subtle properties of peppermint hydrosol. Uh, This information I'm taking directly from my course, Hydrosols for Health. Peppermint resonates with the solar plexus chakra. That's the third chakra. It can help encourage healthy self-esteem and personal integrity. It also resonates with the throat chakra. At this energy center, peppermint produces clarity in communication and concentration. And finally, it also stimulates the conscious mind and promotes inspiration and insights by resonating with the sixth chakra, which is the third eye. If you sip pepper and hydrosol while you're journaling, you may have clarity of your thoughts, increased awareness. That's that third, I beg your pardon, that's the throat chakra at work. And this is not quite as deep, but if you mist yourself with peppermint hydrosol just before meditation. It may also help you to stay present and awake. And finally, it does help clear the room of negative energy. Personally, I use juniper berry, hydrosol, or essential oil for that. But peppermint is a great backup or, you know, could could be your first choice or you could mix them together. Get peppermint hydrosol and put a little juniper berry essential oil in there. Got a great spray for clearing the room of those negative vibes. That's it for peppermint hydrosol. You know what that means? It's time for Smell My Life. Ah! I recently had a massage client on the table who had a really sore neck. She has a tendency to raise her shoulders throughout the day. We all do that. And it's especially common if you're doing something where you're focusing, you tend to draw up your shoulders. 
And as a result, the muscles in the sides of her neck basically have shortened. And so I really encouraged her to stretch and showed her some stretches. And she said, heat really makes it feel better. So in her massage, when I worked on her neck, I used black pepper because it's high in beta caryophylline, which is great for pain. And it's really warming. And with a little drop, a uh, little drop, a drop of clove, made that into a like a 5% blend and use that on her neck. And she felt better right after the massage. So I'll be interested to see when she returns how long the therapeutic effects of that blend made her feel better. And finally, I want to mention that today's show is sponsored by Copperstills.com. At Copperstills, we understand that buying distillation equipment can be intimidating, especially if you're a beginner. That's why our primary focus is customer service and working with you to find the right still for your specific needs, whether you're creating hydrosols or essential oils. That's Copperstills.com. And that's a wrap for Aromatic Wisdom Podcast, episode 51. Don't forget to check out the new podcast website, aromaticwisdompodcast.com. Let me know what you think. Until next time, my friends, be happy, be well, 